everyone. Glad to be here in Just Mini Pigs. This is Milo. Um, he is, bless you. He is obviously smelling something. Anyways, um, he's the pig we're gonna be working with today. I'm gonna turn this around and introduce myself real quick. Like I said, this is Milo. He is um, the pig we have here at the center. He is the pig we have here at the center. Um, and we, we use him to educate the world of pigs um, in positive reinforcement. Hi, Amy. I'm gonna turn this around. Hi, Crystal. Here's the lovely Milo. Um, hey, Julie. Hey, everybody. I'm really excited to be on here. Uh, my name is Laura Joseph. Um, I'm the owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We are an international educational center, and we teach people about um, applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement um, with their animals to increase the relationship uh, people have with their animals. Um, I've taken master's classes in this, and hey, there's the awesome Anita. Hi, Laura. Hi, Christina. Um, and the classes that I take were, we never talked about animals in the classes. Um, it was all people. I just use this applied behavior analysis as a branch of psychology. They're trying to break away from psychology because what applied behavior analysis is, is it focuses on observable, measurable behavior. Um, Sandy, will you remind me not to forget to talk about labels? Or Lindsay? <laughs> so before we start, hello everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Hi Beth, I see a lot of really familiar names. Um, I want to say, Anita, thank you so much for allowing me to do this, and thank you for um, supporting the, the, the science behind the behavior uh, that we practice here. Um, so I am the one that um, was uh, interviewed in that article that Anita posted on Just Many Pigs the other day. So I'm gonna turn this around and introduce some of the people in the animals we're gonna work with. Um, you guys just met uh, Milo. I'm gonna turn this around. This is Sandy. Hi. <laughs> Sandy is my right hand and helps me with a lot of the animals here. Um, she's gonna be taking over the camera while I do some of the training to show you guys what I do what we do. This is the lovely Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> Lindsay is um, her primary focus is she works on enrichment for all the animals here. So we're gonna talk about, I wanna address enrichment in this live stream as well. We're gonna work with uh, Milo, the mini pig over here. Um, Milo is, he's like, me? Did somebody say my name? Milo is over two years old. Um, so we're gonna be working with Milo. I'm gonna show you, this is Quincy. She is um, our Rottweiler, and she is an education Rottweiler. And here is, we're gonna be working with Levi. Levi is deaf, and we teach the animal world about working with deaf um, or disabled animals through Levi. Anyways, with that being said, I wanna talk about a couple of things. Let me just go ahead and turn this around. Uh, because that article that um, I posted in what we do in applied behavior analysis um, is you focus on observable measurable behavior so let me go ahead and get I'll, maybe I'll just go ahead and get um, labels out of the way but I'm gonna eventually turn this camera over to Sandy and I'm gonna show you guys some training and why we do what we do um, labels, something like, uh, in the pig world, um, the label, uh, that's Suki, our blue-fronted Amazon. Their labels are something you use to describe, uh, behavior. And animals, unfortunately, get labeled with those behaviors, such as aggressive or dominant. Um, when the problem with labels is, I mean, 
those are two labels that are heavily used in the pig world. The problem with labels is if people, uh, if people give the animal's behavior or the animal a label, it tends to, they, they think they can't work with the behavior. So I will not say pigs are dominant. I'm not going to say that. Um, because uh, what I am going to say is show me what dominant looks like because once you show and tell me an observable measurable behavior such as um, Milo is very dominant uh, he has to uh, I don't know what does he have to do um, all the toys are his he will he'll be very aggressive towards the Rottweiler Quincy for her toys that is a label be careful with it because you can change that behavior you can prevent that from behavior from happening in the first place um, and when the behavior when the undesired behavior already happens you've totally missed your opportunity to change that behavior okay um, Milo is over two years old one thing like I was just talking to Sandy and Lindsay about I am NOT a big fan of using the term the terrible twos because what those terrible twos are are primary learning animals where your animal is learning how to behave um, and what desired or undesired behaviors are being reinforced and very strongly. If you do not interact and show that animal and help show that animal the alternate behavior that you want, because you guys have to live together, um, you're missing prime opportunity for those very crucial learning years. Those are the terrible twos. And I don't know exactly, I mean, I know how people use them, um, take those under your control and show your animal what you want them to do that is going to earn reinforcement. Yes, so once the animal, once the pig has charged the other pig, has charged the kid, has charged the dog, you have already missed the opportunity to redirect that behavior. I'm going to show you some things and I'm gonna talk about a couple of things here. Um, so what Sandy is doing is you had heard the dogs barking at the beginning of the live stream. She didn't force them to do anything. What she's doing is showing them what behaviors are going to earn reinforcement. That is exactly what she's doing. Um, and so I can talk. Um, so thank you, Sandy. Yep. <laughs> Very nice, Sandy. <laughs> she knows I'm trying to use my <laughs> I positively reinforce behavior I want to see increase so something else people think that food is the only reinforcer no it is not attention is a very powerful reinforcer attention is the number one reason why animals lose their homes because people unknowingly reinforce undesired behavior um, with pigs I would say behaviors labeled as aggressive are the number one reason why they lose their homes. The number one reason why I get people contacting me is uh, uh, behaviors labeled as aggressive. So before we move on to show some training, I, wanna, I do want to address move the pig. My problem, I will say I do have a problem and a concern with move the pig. Um, I've read about what it is and I um, I'm going to just going to point out some concerns. Um, so, and somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but move the pig is to go up and um, like this. I don't even, I'm not even going to do it because I don't want to do it. Um, you force the pig to move, correct? What, no, wherever it's sitting, you just force the pig to move to let the pig know that you're the dominant pig right do I have that correct um, I have several concerns with this and um, I'm not demeaning the person or the people who use it support it not at all I have my concerns because I have okay thanks Anita I have a lot of people contacting me for behavior consultations that um, have used move the pig and guess what um, they have a pig that is now labeled as aggressive and I've worked with very stressed pig caretakers because they've used it um, that pig is well on its way to lose its home 
Um, now, if people continue to do that, that is going to keep me in business, and that is not at all what I want to happen. Um, so, my problems with Move the Pig is, number one, I am not a pig. So pigs relate to other pigs and how pigs relate to each other. I am a human living with a pig. I am a human living with dogs. Um, I am a human living with birds, with people. We have a turkey vulture out there in the center, a lever, lemur in the other room. Um, I work with a lot of animals at zoo, at zoos. Um, like I said in the post that Anita first published it, or posted is, I am not going to practice move the gorilla um, because I do not want to see what the consequences are. People tend to be a little more forceful with animals that they're bigger of, uh, bigger than. Um, it's not that it doesn't work. Maybe it works, but not without its consequences. Um, and one of those is contingency. It doesn't teach the animal contingency. Does that pig know why you are doing this? If there is no contingency there, um, you could be, I mean, pigs are prey animals. 99% um, of aggressive behaviors in the majority of animals is based out of fear. Um, that's why Ian Dunbar said a fearful, unsocialized dog is an extremely dangerous animal. And I will agree 110%. Um, so back to move the pig, it doesn't teach contingency. What contingency is, is that the animal knows if this happens, then this happens every single time. Um, when I first start training a, a, a new behavior, I will put that behavior on a continuous schedule of reinforcement. What does that mean? That means um, every single time the desired behavior is given to me, I will reinforce it. I will reinforce it with food. I will reinforce it with attention, toys, play, tone of voice. Um, temperature of something reinforcers are deep they are not, this is not behavior is not simple um, if it was we'd all be masters at it there would be no behavior issues um, animals are not simple they're complex individual unique species um, I get very passionate about what I talk about and and I get very passionate because what we do here is we try to show people how to raise the bar for caring for animals. Um, whether that's in a companion animal society, um, zoo environment, um, or educational environment. Um, so the animal in new, Move the Pig needs to understand the contingency, okay? I am, before I sit here and bore you guys all to death, um, with the talking. I am going to do a training example. I'm going to turn this over to Sandy and when I do, um, Sandy's going to take a look and watch um, some of your comments and relay them on to me. But one thing, when I'm training, I don't like to talk because training is communication. You are communicating with the animal. That animal cannot speak and if they do, a lot of it is contextual, um, some of it is mimicry. Um, <laughs> so here is Lindsay and Rico, the umbrella cockatoo. She is reinforcing Rico's, every time Rico says hi, Lindsay says hi. That behavior of talking maintains or increase, so that is behavior is being reinforced. If that behavior maintains or increases, it's being reinforced. What is the uh, reinforcer Lindsay's using? attention. It is very strong. Use it. Um, so I'm going to turn this around, give this to Sandy, and I will take some questions um, after I'm done training. But what I was going to say, I don't like to talk when I'm training because training is communication. Positive reinforcement training is the strongest form of communication I have found with any animal using applied behavior analysis. And if if somebody is talking to me, that means it's interrupting my conversation with that animal. I will see that animal get frustrated or start to give me other undesired behaviors. I was training a giraffe yesterday. Somebody was talking to me and I was like, give me a minute, let me finish with the giraffe. Because as the more I was talking to her, 
the giraffe puzzles was getting frustrated and starting to pace and kick and raise his head. That is behavior is being learned. That animal can see, hear, or smell you. You are training it. What are you training it? Um, I'm going to turn around, give it to Sandy. Hang on. Okay. So just be careful of the buttons up here. Yep. Okay. So we have two dogs in a pit. And yeah, he's looking. He's already knows uh, that I spell his name M I L O. <laughs> I've started spelling his name because when I say his name, he comes running. So uh, just now, when I said M I L O, his eyes open and his ears perked up. So I will get M I L O out, and I will show you if I do not train these dogs with my M I L O, <laughs> there will be a fight and the pig is not going to win. Um, I do not want to see that happen. Each time that undesired behavior happens, it is being reinforced. If that behavior continues to happen, it's being reinforced and it's getting stronger. It's developing a history of reinforcement. Um, once an animal has learned something, it cannot unlearn it. Uh, you can then change it. You ready to start working? Um, so, that's why we teach stations. There's one of Milo's stations. Milo has many. What a station is, is just go to an area and don't move until I ask you to do otherwise. Um, we have that in the center of the room because we will have all three of them out. Sometimes things start getting, energy starts building really strong. We will tell Milo to go to a station and when he does, we throw reinforcement to him with a pig. The nice thing and easy thing about training pigs is they're always food motivated. So let me get Milo out. So watch, this is natural behavior happening here. Milo. So we teach him on your bed. Good. What, uh, we're teaching him to target his front two feet on his bed because it prevents him from uh, bolting out of his cage, out of his crate. On your bed. Good. Otherwise, he comes over and starts pushing the door open. The more he pushes the door open, the stronger that history of reinforcement will. On your bed. Good. Okay, so here's his X. This is a target. Good. So we teach him, to, and his cue is touch your target. And what I want is basically just his head and his body. So good. Um, somewhere on, near, or around it. Um, um, I'm just going to go ahead and touch your target. Good. So here comes Quincy on her bed. Good. What behavior? I want. I need to keep control of this situation or I guarantee you there's going to be a fight. Um, okay. On your station. On your station. Good. So Milo and Quincy over here. Good. Milo and the deaf dog do not get along. This is Levi. He is good. He does not like Milo. Milo does not like him. Uh, Milo, on your station. Good. So Milo was coming over here to check out this piece of wood on the floor because it was possibly food. And I told him to go back to his station. Good. So um, why we teach a station is it helps you get control over the animal. Um, because if he went for that food and she went for that and that was food on your station, um, there's going to be an accident. So this is why this the power of positive reinforcement is it teaches the animal what to do that's going to earn reinforcement, telling the animal what not to do. So that's what he's doing. He's just checking out to see if this is food. So good. So you could set yourself up for success by cleaning the floor, which we did, but it gets dirty so fast here because of all the animals. What positive reinforcement does is it tells the animal what to do that's going to earn reinforcement. Good. So I don't want these three interacting. There is no need for it. 
That is a pig. These are dogs. I'm just not going to take the chance. Um, good. I see people letting dogs play with pigs. Um, good. Quincy, sit. Good. Um, I'm just not going to do it here because I've seen too many dog and pig accidents. Um, so something else we work on is I'm going to bring these two over here. Stay. Levi. See how Levi's making a long arc? Because he does not like the camera. distance over here. She's just sitting because I'm putting my hand in the treat bag. But. They're asking what type of treats do you use that are safe for both dogs and pigs? Good, good question. Um, before I answer that, so what I'm doing here let me show you this. Um, what I'm using right now is a very low value food reinforcer. Um, it, they're bird pellets because birds waste a lot of food. <laughs> so these dogs, are, I haven't even worked up to dog fruit. Um, something I'm working on right here, and Sandy has trained this very well. We all train a station very well. Good. Um, is when this door opens, that is an audible cue to all the dogs to go running out the door, all the animals. If that happens, there is going to be a fight. Good. So what we um, train here is stay. Good. Good. So I dropped a piece of food. Quincy went for it, but Milo stayed on his station. What I'm going to do is reinforce the behavior I want to see increase. So I immediately went to him. Um, immediately went to him and reinforced. Good. Did everybody see what I did and understand why I did it? Good. Um, something else we do, I'm going to go pretend like I'm getting in Rocky's cage. Okay. So if the mammals get in the cages here, their mammals are in some pretty, they're in danger. <laughs> so what we do, you guys see the X's on the floor? Those are targets for the mammals to either put their head or target their behinds to. Um, so I'm going to go pretend like I'm going to get in the last cage. Uh, the last cage on my left. I'll show you what we train. Because there's going to be a fight between a pig and a bird. So, hey, Milo, you want to come with me? He's on his station because he's trained so well to stay on his. Milo, come. So, he knows. Now, he's going to sniff to see if there's. He knows to go to this X when I go to walk in his cage. Good. That is why they are here, because it tells the animal what to do. Hi. On your target. Nice job. Good. Because there's food all over on the floor in here. does is tell the animal what to do and where to go that's going to earn reinforcement. Uh, 
and this is Quincy's target. This is the Rottweiler's target. So they both sit right here, and I reinforce for those behaviors. Um, I want to see, was there any questions? Uh, it's mainly just stuff asking about personal experiences. Okay. And okay. about the target stick. Okay, about it. Uh, if you can show it. How to use it? Yeah, or just even to show it in general. Um, what they look like. Do we have any target sticks around here? Yeah, I saw one earlier. Um, we, I bet you there's a lot of target oh, sticks in that room. Where? Behind that. Super long target stick. <laughs> Who are we using this for? <laughs> Let's see. Ready? Milo, touch. Good. So um, what the target does, stick does, is when I teach people how to use the target stick, they think, on your station, on your station. They think that, um, good, it's a magic wand. It's not a magic wand. The reason this is so strong is because people are learning contingencies with their animals. Milo, touch, good. And it's usually on a continuous schedule of reinforcement. What that means is that the animal knows that every time he touches his nose to the stick, the reinforcer is delivered. On your station. Hi. Good. So I put the target, you've noticed that when I tell him to go to a station or ask him to go to a station, I hide this behind me because it just being out is a cue to him. Like he's getting confused. Do you want me touching it? What do you want me doing? See, this is confusion. And when confusion happens, this is training. Um, what you're doing is you're not pairing a, uh, a visual cue with a positive rainbow. That will confuse your animals and an accident can happen. Um, and you can un easily untrain everything you've been working so hard on training. Mm -hmm. Milo, on your station. Hi. Hi, guys. Good. So Rocky just said, hi, guys. And both Lindsay and I are going to post it. So not once has Milo charged anybody. Um, what are some of the other things that I wanted to talk about? Not once has Milo charged anybody. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about a behavior, but we, everybody here pays attention to it because we know it can happen. That's right, Rocky. And if it happens, then the animal has already learned it and it can't unlearn it. Now you have to counter condition. Um, now you have to show that animal has already learned that that got, and, if, and if that pig charges you and you run or get away or jump on a counter or whatever, and if, if that pig, if that's what the pig wanted, you just taught it that that's what it, that's what it needs to do. By no means does that mean sit through a bite or a head swipe or a charge or a lunge. Um, the key is redirect it before you even see. There's little subtle cues that undesired behavior is getting ready to happen. Sandy saw it the other day between the Rottweiler and Milo. Quincy was over there on the bed. Um, what, Milo went up and just stared at her? Yeah, he was, she was lying on the floor. Milo, oh, okay, so Quincy was on the floor and Milo just went over and stared at her. I've seen it happen. Watch, those are the things you want to watch for. Don't go run and chase, I mean, what we don't do is we don't go run and chase the pig. Um, we don't smack jump in and yell at it because there are other methods that are more effective and science shows to be them more effective. Um, synapses in the brain don't develop as quickly or fully as if they would uh, under negative reinforcement, positive punishment during times of aversives um, as they would during positive reinforcement. Right. And science and studies already show as well that if an animal is learning through positive reinforcement, it is its preferred form of enrichment. So, um, anything else that we didn't talk about? But the key was with the charge, catch it before it happens because the antecedents, those cues are there. So just Milo, the proximity is a cue. 
um, the standing still, the tail top stops wagging, hair raises on the back of the neck, those are, you, now you get several of them. Did you miss the first one, okay? Did you miss the second? Okay, there was a third, okay, there was a fourth. Those are the subtle, one, those are the subtle signs to look for. Um, there are side effects to using aversives to control behavior. There are side effects um, of using force coercion. That's why we don't work, we don't try to be the dominant animal. We, I don't even know if science shows that. I know people were saying there's dominant bird. There is, science does not show there's dominance. Um, what we do is we work with observable, measurable behavior. Um, some of the side effects of using aversives to control behavior, I want a strong working relationship with that animal. And believe me, I used to use aversives to work with behavior before I understood alternative methods and my reinforcer behind using the alternative methods is the power that it has. Um, it is very strong. Um, I've used force before, I don't want to work that hard. I've used force before, it's not as strong as alternative methods. Um, and when I create stress in that animal's environment, um, I was just talking in another live stream this morning, when there's stress in that animal's environment, they don't learn the contingencies as well. I work with a lot of, very, a lot of dangerous animals. Um, I am, I there's, there's one animal I'm working with right now that there is zero percent for error. Uh, there is zero percent for error, and if I do make a mistake, there will always be cage bars between us, uh, because if not, my life would be in some pretty serious jeopardy. Um, the relationship with the animal isn't as strong. If I'm continue, will I use force, coercion, or aversives to control behavior? Yes, I will. If the alternative is worse um, but those instances are are far outweighed by using positive reinforcement um, if I have to use force coercion or aversives to change behavior I will use it but say note to self this animal and this behavior needs training um, so I think we pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover um, as far, oh, two things I didn't cover. Get your pigs socialized. If they don't have the opportunity to be with other pigs, he will, he's not gonna have that opportunity. Um, there's too much danger there. Um, he makes a great education pig. Keep your pigs socialized. I work with a lot of people in their pigs to get that pig socialized, get them used to changing environment. You do not want to do that all at once. It can be very stressful for a pig that's not used to a changing environment. Um, we have in here, in the animal room, we've got the training room, we've got the center, we've got the backyard, we've got the house, we've got outings that Milo's used to all of this. Um, if your pig is not used to, you can slowly incorporate those changes into your pig's life for the benefit of the pig and for the benefit of the relationship with you and your pig and for the benefit of your pig's future. Um, Milo is pretty well, he's like, what? He is pretty well enriched. Piggy butts. Piggy butts. Um, he is pretty well enriched. He can be a very destructive pig very fast. Um, we're big believers in, look where he goes. Because it has a strong history of being reinforced there. Now, I am, did I ask for it? No, but I'm going to reinforce it because I want that behavior to remain strong. Once you have a behavior strong, then switch to another schedule of reinforcement to keep it strong. That's why undesired behaviors stay very strong, is because they're reinforced once in a while. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, and I wanted to try to keep it at about a half an hour. We're about five minutes over, yeah. Okay, uh, so they were asking about where to start generally. Um, and your website. Okay. Um, if Anita doesn't mind, um, wait, just contact me. You can go to the animalbehaviorcenter.com, click on contact me. That'll go right, that's an email right to me. 
Um, where do you start? It depends on what's the behavior you're looking for. Good. Um, where I start, especially if you're working with pigs labeled as aggressive, where I start is calm. Reinforce calm behavior. Then those behaviors need shaped. A lot of times what I'll, st what I'll do with um, start is just getting the animal to look at me. Check in with me, look at me. Good, reinforce. Um, if you have questions, just contact me um, and I will respond. Uh, my email address is Lara, L-A-R-A, at the, T-H-E, AnimalBehaviorCenter.com. Um, but I always start with the behavior. Make it so simple for the animal to give you the behavior you want. Um, and then, because that gives you a place to reinforce. It gives you a place, good job, my life, to tell the animal, that's the behavior I'm looking for that's going to earn you your reinforcement. Just be careful. If your animal does not understand why you are doing something, it's probably, can it work? Yes, but not without its consequences. Um, one thing, we have an animal uh, behind Sandy that you can tell with that behavior, uh, Rocky, <laughs> you can tell with a lot of his behavior, there's apathy, lethargy. That's something else that I look for. That can tell me a lot about that animal's history. Um, and with him, it's very sad. He moves very slow um, due to unpredictability in what's getting ready to happen. So I'm, when I'm working with an animal that um, is, is, has a history of unpredictability, the animal doesn't know, that animal's gonna charge. If that animal charges, it doesn't understand what you're asking. So start really simple and start positively reinforcing for calm behavior, behavior you want to see the animal do. Good. So you see there's long periods of time between me reinforcing him. Could I go up and reinforce him with a hug, a scratch? Absolutely. Uh, when we're out on outings, something he loves is when we're done with the outing. I mean, like right now, he's probably going to grunt. Um, but when we're done with the outing, is I just tell him what a good he's And he loves that. He sits in the back of the Jeep in a crate. Um, he sits in the back of the Jeep in a crate and just sits there and lets me rub all over him. So he'd rather have food right now because he's been receiving it for sitting on his station. Um, Anita, thanks for letting me come on here. If you guys don't have any questions, what I can do is I'll go back once this live stream is over. I've got another one I have to do today. Um, once I'll go back and respond to you guys' um, comments here. So that's all. All right? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Anita. Love the group.